Welcome to the locker room, the number one source for Texans daily digital content. I'm Landry Locker. You can hear me Monday through Friday, 10 to 2 Central on Sports Radio 610 and the Odyssey app. Damian Pierce, one of the most exciting Texans last year, really the only guy uh, from the skill position point of view that really stuck out. Now, does he stick out a little bit more because of surroundings and could Damian Pierce be in a situation where he's not even the starting running back and not the best running back on his own team. It's been a topic that's been thrown around. And could it actually be in his best interest uh, long term? We'll hear from D'Amico Ryans on the topic. Uh, we'll talk about all of the uh, X factors, the variables. Um, we'll give a historic point of view, and we will break this whole thing down as we always do inside the locker room. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Locker room on YouTube. You know what it is. Let's get it. Hey, locker room. Yeah, we in the locker room. Texas talk. Yeah, you know what we about to do. Localize every angle is what we really do. We the source. We the source of the city too. Damian Pierce last year, one of the bright spots for a three-win football team. Uh, one of the most exciting guys on the field. One of the most charismatic guys off the field, and the guy that. I envision will be around in the NFL for a long, long time. But in what role is the question? Many feel that Damian Pierce is a workload back. He's he's a workhorse. Now, at Florida, he only had double-digit carries seven times. Uh, and last year, he kind of wore down a little bit. Now, it might be misleading that he missed four games last year because – I think he probably would have played a couple of those games had the Texans had something to play for. Uh, I know for sure he wasn't going to be able to play uh, at least the first one or the second. I was I was downstairs uh, outside of the locker room before going to do my interviews uh, after the game, and you could see Damian Pierce limping around uh, really badly uh, initially. But Damian Pierce, can he hold up? Let's look back at that rookie season. Um 2022, 220 carries, 939 yards, 4.3 yards per carry, five touchdowns on the ground, one receiving touchdown, 165 yards uh, in the air. Pretty good. Not bad. Pretty good, especially for a rookie, especially for a guy that you got in the fourth round. And he was one of the better uh, rookie running backs last year. Uh, Brees Hall and Walker probably up at the top. Damian Pierce, at least in the discussion, had he not gotten hurt. My question, though, is can you really dismiss uh, getting hurt when you're doing something that you haven't done in a long time? Like eventually the body's going to wear down. We saw the way that Damian Pierce was being used. Uh, we saw the way that the Texans were kind of running him into the ground. Um, and it, it was apparent that there really wasn't no disrespect. There really weren't competent running back options uh, on this roster, which we'll get into a little bit later. And, and, and I'll ask a question about. Uh, the way we look at Damian Pierce and whether that actually has some sort of impact on it. But before that, um, the people, I can already imagine some people, shout out to all the viewers, subscribe, like, uh, keep riding along, number one source for Texans daily digital content, uh, saying how the hell could Damian Pierce not be uh, your starting running back? How, how the hell would it make sense for Damian Pierce for us to see less of Damian Pierce? What is this jackass talking about? Well, let's hear from... Chris Long, the Green Light Podcast, uh, and let's hear from let, let's hear from D'Amico Ryan's uh, and what D'Amico Ryan's, the head coach of your Houston Texans, has to say about this. Uh, here was D'Amico Ryan's with Chris Long talking about Damian Pierce potentially having his workload minimized in the best interest of the Texans and the best interest of the of number thirty one himself. You know, do you spell him? Um, do you look to to be a little bit more running back by committee because you have something special and you want him to last the entirety of that first contract and maybe beyond? Yeah, I think it, it all starts, Chris, with the offensive line, right? And those guys, you know, being dominant, as dominant as they can be up front, yep. right? Allowing us to run the ball and you want to run it like by committee. You don't yeah. want to wear one guy out and just run him in the ground. If we can run it by committee, Right, and have some help for Damien. We know Damien is a great player, physical, tough player. We want to rely on him, but also we want to spell him to where we can, you know, keep him healthy and have him the entire year. So having a few guys who can, who can tote the rock, that would be awesome for us. Yeah. And so there is uh, D'Amico Ryan's himself. So D'Amico Ryan says that he would like to have a committee uh, to spell 
Damian Pierce. Uh, that's probably not something you want to hear if you're thinking about drafting Damian Pierce in fantasy, but that's what D'Amico Ryan says. So how does that committee work and how does Devin Singletary stack up uh, against Damian Pierce? Let's just look at his 2022 season. Um, Singletary last year had 177 carries, which is 43 less than Damian Pierce. He had 819 yards, which is 120 less. He had 4.6 yards per carry, which is plus 0.3. He had one more touchdown on the ground at six. They both had one receiving touchdown, uh, and he had 280 receiving yards, which is 115 more. Um, now, Buffalo not known for running the ball very well. Uh, I think Singletary is a little bit sneaky uh, inside the tackles. But the one thing, when you're talking about a running back by committee, the one thing that you do want, and I've, I think I've, I've heard Kyle Shanahan talk about, about this. I've heard D'Amico Ryans talk about it is you want different backs that can do different things, that can complement each other. I think the ultimate you know, modern example was when Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara uh, first started out together, and I think they both made the Pro Bowl. I don't think you're going to get that. If you get that, hell, who knows what the, the sky might be the limit for the Texans. But you have Devin Singletary, who's a little bit better in the open field, a little bit better of a receiver, sneaky good inside the tackles. You have Damian Pierce, who is actually a sneaky receiver. He can do a lot of stuff. And he's kind of your thumper. He's your short yardage guy. Uh, he's going to be the guy that when they get when they get inside the five yard line, you know the ball's going in the chest of thirty one. So you got different backs that can do different things. Uh, when we throw out that c word um, committee. Uh, other than that, is there going to be other guys that can maybe spell these guys as well? Uh, you have Mike Boone, uh, who you brought in in the off season. Don't know what to expect from him. You have Valade, uh, who you prioritize as an undrafted free agent. Uh, out of Arizona State, and, and Dario uh, is still here. I, I think Dario is ideally a special teams guy, not a guy that you want at the top of your rotation. Um, and we saw that uh, kind of last year. But the, the the good news about this is, A, there's plenty of plays to where both of these running backs can be able to do things. Like they 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 they're 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 all they both should be able to eat. B, you have Devin Singletary, who's better than any running back that you've that you had on the roster last year, and you have Damian Pierce, who might be the best running back you've had in a while. So you have a, a better running back room now than you have in a long, long time, which kind of leads me to bring up the following question. I love Damian Pierce, and I think Damian Pierce is a good player, and I enjoyed watching Damian Pierce. He was one of the few things that I actually enjoyed watching last year. Uh, with the Texans, but I heard Sean Pendergast and Seth Payne talking about this the other day, and and I think it might be something that, if you're a Texans fan, maybe you take a step back and ask yourself, is Damian Pierce as great as we're talking about Damian Pierce being? And again, I'm saying I'm not saying that he's not not a really good player, but there's kind of like a perception that maybe this is like an elite guy, and this is going to be a perennial Pro Bowler. My question is this though. Do the surroundings and recency romanticize Damian Pierce in the way we talk about him? And I heard Sean saying the other day, yeah, we talk about him like he's Earl Campbell and we talk about him, you know, like he's Walter Payton or something like that. And the numbers are good. They're not great. They're not elite. Now, the offensive line, you heard D'Amico talk about the offensive line. The, the offensive line is a lot better. And the offensive line is going to allow Damian Pierce to to do a lot better job, especially in the interior if Kenyon Green is better, if the center position is upgraded, and if Shaq Mason's as good as they seem to think. So he's going to have more opportunity there, but does the fact that he had Rex Burkhead and Dare last year with him and the fact that we've been watching really bad running backs for a long, long time. I mean, the last guy to wear number 31 was David Johnson. He was one of the worst running backs in football when they traded DeAndre Hopkins for him, and he continued to play that way here. Uh, you had Duke Johnson um, as well. Uh, before that, you had the ghost of Lamar Miller and Bill O'Brien and kind of wore him into the ground. And then you had Carlos Hyde, who looked like RIP to Jim Brown. Uh, he, he, looked, he looked like that when he had 1,000 yards the one year he was here. So it's the fact that we really haven't seen good running backs and we finally see that the Texans have a good running back. And the one year in which we saw him, the running backs around him were the worst that we've ever seen in the NFL uh, and the worst running back room that we've seen. Does that kind of over romanticize the way that we talk about Damian Pierce? I mean, if you look at the actual numbers before, before we even get into it and you look at what Singletary did last year and what Pierce did last year, it's not that far off. 
43 more carries for Pierce, uh, 120 more yards for Pierce. Singletary had plus 0.3 yards per carry, one more touchdown, and 115 more receiving yards. I kind of equate it to the James Robinson season with the Jacksonville Jaguars, where they still decided that they wanted to upgrade the running back position despite the fact that they had James Robinson who kind of surprised them and had a good rookie year. And when we were talking about, you know, the Texans potentially drafting a running back, it was to the point where we were saying, and it was a popular discussion. It was a good discussion uh, as the discussions are always good. Get in the comments, uh, locker room, number one source for Texans daily digital content. Appreciate everyone for rolling through. Um, we were saying, I was saying if B. John Robinson is there at 12, it's a no-brainer. Some people agreed. Other people said, well, you don't draft a running back at 12. You got Damian Pierce. Okay, is, is Damian Pierce to the point where you ignore potentially getting the best player in the draft or one of the highest-rated players in the draft? Is that where we're at with Damian Pierce? Or is Damian Pierce closer to a guy like Devin Singletary, who Buffalo was willing to say goodbye to? Let's just look at James Robinson's rookie season in Jacksonville. Very similar situations because it was a bad it, it, it was a bad situation for him it was a bad situation for Damian Pierce but James Robinson had 20 more carries 240 um he had 131 more yards he averaged 0.2 more yards per carry he had two more touchdowns uh on the ground and he had two more touchdowns receiving and he had 179 more receiving yards he's fallen off since then so and I've had this quite, I've had this discussion with some Texans fans, and they automatically say, "Well, Damian Pierce is a hundred times better than uh, James Robinson." James Robinson is not in that category. Are we sure? Look at the rookie season. Again, Damian Pierce, two hundred and twenty carries. Uh, James Robinson had two forty. Uh, Damian Pierce, nine hundred and thirty nine yards. James Robinson had a thousand seventy four point five yards per carry to four point three seven touchdowns on the ground to five. Uh, three receiving touchdowns to one and 179 more yards receiving both on bad teams. It's not like you can point to the Singletary stats and say, well, he's on a better squad. He's got more around him. That was a dog butted Jacksonville team and James Robinson kind of fell off. So I do, I do think that that's at least something to keep an eye on. Uh, and it's something to uh, at least take into account when this discussion is being had. The good thing is that we're having this discussion because Regardless of what Damian Pierce is, if Damian Pierce ends up being an all pro caliber running back and he ends up being one of the best running backs the Texans have had, and you look back at this video and you say, We can't even believe, I can't even believe we were having this discussion. First of all, good. I'm rooting for the guy. I love the guy. I think he's awesome. Um, but you just heard D'Amico Ryans, you heard Chris Long talking about it might be in his best interest to minimize him. At least, at the very least, we have a guy in Devin Singletary who we can at least have this discussion about because I can F and promise you one thing. We damn sure weren't having it about Rex Bur Burkhead last year. So at least the Texans, as they have across a, a, a lot of parts of the roster, at least the Texans have improved it to where we're having that discussion. Now let's get to the uh, important stuff. I'm sure most of you play fantasy football. This is going to be a real polarizing topic, especially in Houston leagues. Because I think in Houston leagues, there's a chance if you're in a 12-team league or you're in a 10-team league, uh, Damian Pierce is going to go maybe in the second round, probably in the third round. Are you going to be willing to do that in your league? For me, the I, I'm going to put like the the average draft position for me for Damian Pierce. I think it's probably going to be in the top 35, top 35, maybe maybe 40 uh, outside of Houston. But for me, I'm going to have to take Damian Pierce in the late third, early fourth uh, of my fantasy league. I don't think I'm going to go with him at 10. Now, he could end up being Jamal Williams-like, where he's just the touchdown lurker, and he's the one that gets all of the short yardage carries, which might factor in. But I actually think if we're talking about fantasy value of these two running backs, I think there's a chance Singletary could end up being the steal. And Pierce, especially in Houston leagues, and y'all know this, when you're in a Houston league and you're drafting a Texans player, he's always going to get drafted earlier. I, I think when it comes to fantasy, Pierce is going to get drafted earlier. Singletary is a guy you want to keep your eye, your eye on, especially if you're in a PPR league, because I think Bobby Slowick's going to do a lot of things to get him the rock. 
Can you believe we're talking about two Texans running backs being drafted in fantasy? They're both draftable. That's for damn sure. What a difference a year makes. Cuss, discuss, comment, like, subscribe. In the loop, 10 to 2 Central on Sports Radio 610. I'm Landry Locker. Appreciate everyone for riding along. Appreciate everyone for uh, for commenting and uh, bringing that passion. Uh, I'll talk to you uh, later on in the week. We're going to get into this clowny situation. We're going to hear from C.J. Stroud on Tuesday. It's a busy-ass week. Uh, no days off. Have a good weekend, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, riding along. Yeah, we top two and we not two Plugged in daily digital on YouTube Uh, we got taste for days